I came out about two weeks ago now at this stage, uh, but I had time to play it over the last weekend and wanted to highlight it here. Chicory, A Colourful Tale. So this is a joint effort amongst a number of different developers, but I suppose the lead man is Greg Lobanov, who is most known for the 2019 indie game Wonder Song, which was where you played as this singing bard. Chicory is a new game, and what an absolute delight this video game is. Oh, good. So the best shorthand to use to describe Chicory is that it is a puzzle-heavy, top-down Legend of Zelda-like, but without combat, mostly. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of combat that I'll talk about in a minute. In this world of walking, talking animals, you play as a dog that's inherited this paintbrush that you use to colour in this world, this world that is all black and white. The previous artist is Chicory. They used colour in the world, but they've fallen in hard times. So yeah, when you come into an area, the world is split up into screens. Mm. Uh, For the first time, all you see is the page of a colouring book. Like everything has really fat outlines Mm. of like objects and people and buildings, etc. So then you use your brush to colour in the world. On PC, I will say, I mean, I haven't played it on console, but I I found this was the best way to play it. Like, move your character around with sad W and then move the paint brush around with the mouse. I think it actually works quite well. You can, you know, you can paint however you want. You can just splash paint about the place, so you can intricately fill in each object with one of the colours available to you because the colours available to you depends on the area you're in. But it isn't just about making pretty pictures. Mm. Painting is how you interact with the world. It's how you push the buttons that control platforms or even like some of the trees and mushrooms in the world or other uh, plants and whatever else. When you paint them or erase the paint that's on them, they may react and that can aid your progression and even even later on, as you play through the game, you're gaining abilities. And later on, you get the ability to splatoon yourself through paint. And that is how you can get through small gaps and places you couldn't before. Mm. So if you, if you want, you don't have to paint every last area. Paint in whatever you want. That will actually help you make your way through the game. At the start, that's what I was doing. But it kind of felt a bit lifeless. Right. Which I suppose is... That's the intent, you know. Walking around what is essentially this living colouring book, it just feels wrong to see it devoid of colour. So, Mm. yeah, I'm not going to say I spent the entirety of the game meticulously drawing in every character because the game does definitely go on a tad too long. And my patience for works of art was wearing a little thin, but it it is still just really nice making the world kind of brighter place for all the sweet townsfolk that you meet as you play on not only the abilities but you gain other things like brush styles which are like you can get textured strokes and etc etc so like if you want and if you get good enough at this you could probably make some really shit hot little paintings and another little thing about the painting is that your paintings are persistent so it actually does help you kind of make your way around this this open world so you can see where you've been before, you know? If you come into an area that you haven't been, it's probably going to be black and white. Like, Chicory is very keen to kind of help you along the way and for you to tackle the game at your own pace. Mm. There are side quests. There are collectibles, little bits of clothing for you to wear, etc. There are these lost cats for you to find. Call me interested. Matthew's interested, but if you've no interest in doing all of that, that's fine. Do whatever you want. If you just want to actually just paint in all the pretty pictures, crack on. And the puzzles as well, they're they're mostly not handy, I won't say that. But like they're not going to completely destroy your brain. They're actually quite quite well done. I did want to bring up the music because like the art style is obviously the bread and butter of this game. It's very simple but terrifically effective, going hand in hand with the main mechanic, etc., etc. But the music is fantastic. Mm. Looking at this, you might think, oh, it's going to be all plinky plonky indie piano bollocks. It's not. Like there, there's melody <laughs> to each track. There's heart there. It isn't all nice, easy listening stuff. There is nice stuff, but then you know, it's 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 as you go along, it's infused with kind of some of harsher electronic and bass. Some of the harsher tracks, which you hear during the boss battles, are some of my favourite ones. Yes, there is boss battles in here, uh, and is 
the only time the combat pops up. You're not just whacking big monsters over the head with a brush. It's still... It ties into the themes of the game, I suppose, or the, the, the main mechanic of the game. These boss battles are pretty forgiving in that if you take two hits, you'll die. But when you die, you're instantly thrown in back at the point where you died. So the checkpointing is very, very forgiving. Like the first time this happens, I did think it was a bit jarring because it is quite quite a nice and upbeat game, generally, on the surface at least. As you go on, you can learn that the boss battles actually tie into the main themes of the game very, very well. You know, if you do have trouble with the boss battles, the, the game does give you a lot of accessibility options. Like you can just skip boss battles outright. There's loads of accessibility options. Like you can get rid of the kind of splooshy, squishy noise of paint as well which I think there's a name for it there's a phobia people have I think of paint I know I've like this splooshy squishy painting noise mm. I love it so I was like turn that shit up it's very satisfying <laughs> but yeah I, I kind of mentioned the themes and the kind of story I work on the internet where a large portion of my day to day can be judged by people whenever they like and uh, however harshly they want and this game it sort of looks at that, and it's very easy to sort of hear that and go, oh no, what's this going to be? But the execution is actually fantastic. Uh, and I think it works on other levels as well. I I'm not going to spoil anything, of course, but it essentially revolves around people who create things and then the struggles that they deal with. Your usual self-doubt, imposter syndrome, criticism, depression. So like, while say musicians or a filmmaker or an author or whatever else might gel with this more than others the main themes are still relatable to anyone that's made something for a significant other or a family member or whatever I, i'm well impressed with how it handles the story it rarely gets preachy it doesn't feel too saccharine maybe there are a few characters in there but like a negligible amount i don't know i i wasn't expecting to fall for this game as much as i have it's not perfect i haven't gone into it loads but there is definitely a point in the game where it feels like a natural conclusion and then it goes on for about two hours more which is <laughs> not great i suppose but still one of the better games i've played in 2021 i thoroughly enjoyed it came out of nowhere for me at least so yeah get on chicory if you like painting stuff i suppose <laughs> uh or imposter syndrome one or the other